All right, YouTube subscribers, welcome. Thank you. And we're going to cover the weekly charts. So I do a end of the week wrap video here on Saturday where I'm covering, really looking at the weekly charts. We're going to look at the longer term uh, trends and momentum in, in markets and various stocks. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to find trade ideas uh, and look for solid trades, solid direction so that we all can make some money. So let's get into it. And we'll start out here with the SPY. So what does this tell me here? You can see here, this is a weekly chart. We're going to start out, everything's going to be weekly. And we, uh, we close the week with basically a lower close on the S&P 500 than the previous week. So here's your previous week. Uh, there was your close sitting there about 3.30 and we closed this week about 3.28, slightly lower. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we were a lot lower throughout the week, but still closed lower. So still downtrending, uh, you know, uh, lower highs, lower lows. And we had a little bit of a bounce week, but nothing that is out of control. And obviously we closed lower on the S&P 500. So when I go back to the bigger picture, since that's what this video is really about, I see the uptrend here on the green line. I see the break of that uptrend. I see a back test and I see a another basically back test. When we were in this area, I kept telling everyone that we we're either not going to get up to the back, you know, full back test or we're going to overshoot it. I don't think we're going to just stop right on it. And so far looks like we've stopped short and started to sell off. So not that we had, you know, there was not a full back test. We've already had a full back test. 2019 or right here in February, 2020 was your full back test of the trend line. We almost got there again, but now we are moving down. So that's all I see there in the S&P 500. Q's. So this is the one where most of the price action has been taking place in tech. Uh, for the most part, it's, you know, tech leading the market to the upside, tech leading the market to the downside. So what do we have in tech? Well, tech actually closed the week slightly higher than the previous close. So previous close uh, in tech was about 266 and we closed up here at 271. So a little, little bit of a bounce week. Uh, I don't see a reversal. And I know I got a lot of lines if I can, I can hide them, but I don't see a reversal on the weekly chart here. There's This isn't an outside day, a doji candle, really nothing. So it tells me that there's more selling to come. It doesn't have to be. I mean, we can obviously bounce here, but there's just no indication right now that we have a, a reversal candle or a continuation candle or, or anything. So all I really see is just a bounce week. Well, you know, we still were not able to bounce, you know, recover the the close of the, the pre, or sorry, the, the highs of the previous week. So. It's not a bearish engulf or a bullish engulfing or anything like that. Tells me we're gonna get some more selling. But you know, in my last video on Friday, I pointed out we could pop up to that 275 area, maybe 280, just depends, intra week. Um, or, you know, I, I could see us closing at 275 next week. You know, if we get a some sort of a bounce, we could easily close up at, and close around 275. And that still keeps this this downtrend intact 275 would be right about there um and you know then maybe the following week have a sell-off week so on the weekly i don't see anything bullish on the weekly uh i do see you know i do see a you know continued downside momentum um the the trend line on the weekly is you know it's right there uh and ultimately you know i already had that marked out but ultimately i think that we are just going to get some, you know, we're getting the reaction that I thought we were going to get right here on this red trend line. And that goes back to your big price channel right here. Here's your price channel. And as you can see, we overshot the price channel here. So we got, you know, we pretty much hit that price channel right there uh, at two, you know, it was about 260. We didn't quite get there, but pretty close. And then we got the reaction. So that makes sense that we actually got a reaction when we came down to this, the top end of this price channel. But now if we head back down to that area, I think we break it and we break into the price channel. 
And once we're in the price channel, I would, I would assume that over time, we will work our way down to the bottom end of the price channel. So that's what I think is gonna happen here in the future. I think we are uh, just getting a reaction this week. Maybe next week we, we bounce a little bit, but ultimately I think we head down to the bottom of the price channel. And that still ultimately keeps the tech sector, triple Qs, in a bull market. Tech has not broken its bull market uh, since the 2009 lows. It did twice, broke it here in 2018 and 2020, but the Fed saved it both times. Every other time, uh, it has not broken that, that bull market. So I think that we can, you know, I mean, I could move it down to something like that. Eh, that doesn't really work because, you know, then you only have one data point. So where I have it is, you know, where I think it makes the most sense. Uh, and it's right, right in there. So Q's tells me, you know, whether we bounce next week, uh, over the next weeks to months, <clears throat> we should break into the price channel. And we, once it once we're in the price channel, we'll at some point in time, tag the bottom of the price channel again. Of course, that could be way up here. We don't know when that's gonna be. We could chop sideways and grind around and then tag it way up here. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. But once we're in the price channel, I see some lower prices to come for the, for, uh, you know, until we hit the bottom of that price channel. Once we hit the bottom of the price channel, well, you know, we'll have to evaluate where we're at, what's going on. Uh, that will be very strong support. Looking at the NASDAQ futures, uh, they did have a, a bullish engulfing candle right here. Um, you know, we had equal lows right there and we engulfed and closed the week above the previous uh, highs of the previous week. So bullish engulfing. So again, that sets cues up for a potential move higher, but I I do think that the move higher in cues is going to be a sell the rip opportunity. I think that we could move you know, into some resistance levels and those will be good areas to reestablish short positions that's how I'm trading it right now. That's how I'm trading it. I went flat uh, on my Q's trade over the weekend and I'm looking for better entries on shorting. Uh, 275 potentially, maybe slightly higher. Looking for certain areas to start adding to a short position. Because I don't see any capitulate, you know, capitulatory selling. I, I don't see any reversal candles in the SPY I don't see any reversal candles in the triple Qs. I don't see anything that tells me we're done selling as of yet. Uh, let's look at tech in a different look with XLK. Here's XLK on the weekly. Again, same picture. Uh, an up week, but didn't you know engulf the previous week. So it just tells me that you know this is an up week in a downtrend. That's ultimately what I'm reading from this. And I would expect you know, to see, you know, maybe a slight pop early in the week up to some key levels and then we'll resume some selling. That's what this chart tells me as of right now. I don't see anything that tells me we reversed. Uh, and so, uh, and that, again, this is on the weekly charts. If you go to the daily and the hourly charts, we've had some short-term breakouts on specific levels. So we could pop a little higher intra-week but on the weekly chart, I suspect we, you know, close kind of next week, either where we're at here or, or slightly lower. Um, so again, you know, we'll have to evaluate what, how the end of the week, you know, looks like next week. But as of right now on the weekly chart, looks like continued selling is going. Now, when I look at the hourlies, I see some, you know, when I look at the hourlies on tech, I see some breakouts. So I see some potential possibility for a little bit higher price action so you know that i'm not telling you when i'm evaluating these weekly charts that there's not going to be any higher price action on the i'm just saying on the weekly chart because i can only look at these at the end of the week right now this tells me lower prices um and this is longer term stuff so if you're a, a swing trader or a long-term investor a long-term trader then this tells me over the longer term, we're gonna have some lower prices. Uh, and that's what I see. 
Apple, I think, is a pretty clear idea of what I'm trying to talk about. And so this is a weekly chart. And on this weekly right here, you can see this clean trend all these weeks of uptrend. Every single week told you we were going to have higher prices. That's basically what it kept saying every week. You, it was higher closing and really nothing was broken. No trend was broken on the weekly. So it looked good until you got to right here. And this week right here, I didn't put out a video here but um, on the weekly chart, but I would have said, okay, we broke trend, we're going lower. And I would have been short and I would have been trapped basically or had to scramble and exit when they gapped up uh, the following day. And so that was a bear trap. And you know, bear traps, when they're set, they catch bears and I would have been caught, of course, because there, you know, that was a breaking trend. So, uh, but when it recovered, then the weekly still said bullish. Now we've broken trend again. So the second break in trend, you know, was a couple weeks ago and we had a follow through candle. So confirmation really, you had a break in trend and then a confirming candle. And then today, or you know, this week we just get an up week. So to me, it just looks like an up week in a downtrend. I think we had lower in Apple. Uh, where, where do we go in Apple? Well, you know, here's your 2009 or, or three actually, sorry, not 2000. This is a long term trend line that I could make where we have 2003 kind of, this is where Apple really started its parabolic liftoff was back in 2003. And, you know, you'd had a reaction here in 2019, a reaction, you know, a couple reactions that we've gotten. So, you know, I think we come back down to this trend line uh, over time. At least that's what this weekly tells me. I don't know how we'll get there. We could maybe go, you know, sideways, but eventually I think we're going to tag it at some point in time. Could be a year or two in the future though. Uh, Microsoft. So Microsoft was, did seem like one of the weaker ones, but on this weekly chart, clean bullish engulfing candle right there. So that is a, you know, that is a potential reversal candle. And what you would want to look for to confirm this would be follow through. So this tells me that next week, if we have follow through uh, more bullish weekly action, then potentially the selling is finished in Microsoft for the short term. And we could even come up and do like a full back test in Microsoft. I mean, there's lots of possibilities, but as of right now, bullish engulfing, these candles, though, you don't want to just take the one candle and say and run with it. You really do want to look for that confirming action. The problem with the weekly, uh, the weekly charts is by the time you get that confirming action, you've got you know that the stocks moved quite a bit. So I don't use the weeklies as my entries and exits. I use the weeklies just to give me kind of a general sense of where the market might go in the future, um, and where you know where is the river flowing which way is the current going and I want to position my trades and think about my trades when I look at the hourly charts uh, in context of where which direction the currents flowing and that's how I use these weekly so Microsoft bullish engulfing let's let's see what next week brings whether it's confirmation or failure Amazon no bullish engulfing just an up week in a downtrend so that's all I see there. Google, uh, Google's the weakest one of them all, actually, which is strange. But it, you know, uh, Google, uh, you know, just really can, uh, lower close on the weekly, uh, just weak price action in general. So it tells me Google is going to continue to go lower. Uh, and I don't look at Facebook too often, but we'll pop this one open. Up week in a downtrend, very weak bounce really. The yes, it closed slightly higher than the previous week, and but just barely. So up week in a downtrend. <clears throat> Let's look at XLV here. XLV, and I've got my got some targets, but uh, XLV did hit the major target, and we talked about that. You know, I talked about that in a previous video. Um, you had a bull flat or you had a bear flag bear you know here's your flag pole here's your flag and then your major target was right there at 101 it did hit that major target so it makes sense that you get a bounce um, looks like on the weekly 
what do they call this doji um uh it's a what hanging man i think is what this doji is called so hanging man doji but again it's these dojis i don't you know i like these dojis at the top of trends or at the bottom of trends is where i prefer to look for them when they're in the middle of a trend they don't always give the best signal um and so you know hanging man doji but um a lower close and so i i see lower prices 97 i think is to me pretty high probability uh whether it bounces off you know bounces up and tags the top of this flag up around 105 first um, but I, I think we're heading to 97 in this thing. XLF, weak, a very weak close. Um, closing not at the lows of the week, but about midway. I don't see a reversal candle here. I don't see anything. All I see is continuation of the downtrend. Whether we have about, you know, when you're, when you're in a downtrend, you're, there's going to be up weeks. I mean, it doesn't break the trend, though, and technically nothing changes. So, as long as technically nothing changes on these weekly charts, I still see us over time working our way lower. And the way that this typically will work is as we start to sell off more, the, the selling will pick up speed. Uh, there will be an acceleration of selling. So in the beginning, uh, you get the buy the dip crowd that come in, they buy the dip, they, they think the selling's over. And then they, you know, might be slightly rewarded and feel like, okay, I, I didn't make that much money. It hasn't recovered completely, but it had, you know, it kind of stopped selling. Then the selling starts to, you know, continue and they start to exit. And then everybody starts to realize that we're going much lower and everybody starts to sell. And then the selling accelerates. And as that selling accelerates, that's typically where you'll start to see the, you know, the, um, that's usually where the, the powerful bear market rallies will uh, take place or the rallies in the in the downward move start to take place once that selling starts accelerating. So you get kind of that panic selling and then the big, strong, powerful rallies come in. Um, and I just don't see any of that. I don't see the powerful selling. So to see a big, strong counter trend rally uh, is, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see it quite yet, but we could. You know, so I'll continue to watch those hourly charts. Ah, PayPal. This is a very nice bullish engulfing outside outside uh, week, actually, as well. So PayPal could get a, a you know, some more upside in PayPal. Um, you can see here this weekly completely engulfs the previous week. And that's a pretty good downsize week. And the, this previous week completely engulfed actually the last two weeks. So you'd want to see uh, confirmation week basically, but it is a engulfed, a bullish engulfing candle. Tells me there's could be some more upside here in PayPal. PayPal, if I go to the hourly, I'll just drill down on this one. Yeah, it sold off pretty good. I mean, from the highs up here, it sold off from highs to lows, sold off 20%. Uh, that's pretty, you know, that would make sense that you're going to get some sort of a rally after a 20% drop. Um, you know, if you rode that drop down to get back to even, you'd have to go up about 20, you know, about 24%. It looks like. Okay, back to the weeklies. Uh, Netflix. So bullish engulfing outside day here on the weekly, uh, and you know, so maybe there's a little bit, a little bit of a bounce. It, it would make sense that some of these tech stocks are going to see somewhat of a bounce. They've, they've sold off pretty good uh, in a pretty short time from the highs. So to get a little bit of a bounce would make sense. Again, when you're in a downtrend, you need those bounces for the downtrend to continue. Those bounces, they suck in more longs and they, um, you know, they get buyers. They get some shorts to cover if anybody, you know, if too many shorts are on board then that's typically going to be the end of the, the move in the short term. So those shorts will cover. You'll suck in some more longs. And that's fuel for the next down move. Um, it, when the selling picks up again, those longs will start selling. Shorts will, the shorts who are not short start piling in. And that add, that's the fuel for the next down move. If you don't have that fuel, then the down move is typically over. So something to uh, watch there. But Netflix looks like could have, you know, a positive week next week. Uh, let's look at this KHC. 
So this one's still playing out for what I think is going to be a a good buy price, essentially. Um, I, I need to see some lower prices, but Cage C on the weekly chart has the potential for this big, long bottoming pattern, which is a uh, inverse head and shoulders. So you can see here, this is the shoulder. I've got it. I kind of drew it out right here. This is your head right here on the weekly. And I'm looking for that right shoulder, which would bring prices down to about 25 bucks. And if we can get KHC down around 25 bucks, it has a real high probability that it, that it will hold. And that could be the, uh, you know, the right shoulder, which will start the uptrend uh, in, in this move. Uh, where am I looking for this thing? You know, I'm going to probably look to take a shot at it around this 25 if we can get it. Now, from where we're at on the weekly, and it looks like we're heading lower in the short term, we've got another 13, about 13% to go. Uh, so I'd expect we get some sort of a bounce week at some point, maybe bounce up to this 29.92 and then start to make our way lower. But at some point, I think we'll be down around this 25. That's gonna be the area where I'll be looking to buy this thing. And profit target, uh, I'll be looking to you know, probably sell some of it up around this 48, uh, 48 bucks. So if that trade works out, and it's got a long ways to go to really start to work its way out, but I'll be watching it. If that works itself out, that would be a, you know, potentially a double, 90% a gain. And this thing will be paying, you know, potentially be paying, uh, you know, a pretty good dividend along the way. Oh, another thing to point out on the weekly, uh, and I got to get rid of these, but big, big bullish divergences on the weekly here tells me that we are bottomed out or close to bottoming out in this, <clears throat> in this uh, big long bear market that KHC has been in. You can re recognize that KHC. From the top here down to the bottom sold off about 80 percent so it's been in a full-on market crash stock crash uh, since 2017 and we're now starting to see some bullish divergences basically lower price here uh, and higher momentum in both uh, ppo and rsi on the weekly tells me that this thing's bottomed out so if we can get some more impulsive selling, I'll be looking to be a buyer down there. All right, PHM, I took a shot at this one. We'll see how this works out. Here's what I got on the weekly for P or PM, uh, Philip Morris. Downtrend, you can see the downtrend that I have marked out on the weekly. Several reactions. We broke above that downtrend right here, which was a false breakout, AKA bull trap. Then the big sell-off came and then we've recovered and broke above and we're doing another back test. So is this gonna re, you know, is this gonna play out and look exactly like what it did here, where we get a, you know, a recapture of the channel and start to sell off again? Or is this breakout the real deal? Uh, usually when you break out the second time, you have a higher probability that that time is the real deal. The first time is a lower probability because it's the very first breakout but the second time usually is a higher probability. So I'll take my probabilities here and buy it right at support. So that's where we're at right here, right at support. And I grabbed some of this last week. Uh, 75 bucks is basically right at support. So I think we're gonna start to bounce and I'm looking for a bounce up to this 90 range. So that is the trade idea that I'm looking for on this one. And that would be a gain of about 20%. Uh, and potentially a bottoming pattern. It's also a potential bottoming pattern. All right, zoom. This one, nothing bearish here. Okay, I don't have, I don't have negative divergence. I don't have a reversal candle on the weekly. I have a higher close. Uh, there's volume as well. So in general, I don't see anything bearish. Uh, this thing looks like it's just kind of going parabolic and you know so there will be a bearish reversal coming uh, you know I don't know when but as of right now I don't see it so for me there's nothing here on this one you know I if I was gonna buy this you know I want you want to buy these things down 
you know, down in these areas, this is where you want to buy it. You don't want to buy things when they're up here. Uh, at least in my humble opinion, that's, you know, how I trade. I, I don't buy these things. I buy them when they're down here, when nobody wants them, or right when people are starting to want them. That's when I'm buying. Uh, you know, I'm usually selling up here. Ah, NVIDIA, interesting here. So this one <clears throat> might be a, a good short coming up. We're not there yet, but you can see the weekly closed. That's, you know, it's pretty strong week, um, but ultimately just still kind of sideways from these last few weeks. But the trend has been broken. So if I go down to the daily, here's NVIDIA. This is your March lows. There's your trend right there. We broke the trend. We back test. We back test. Looks like it's trying to do a run up and do another back test. So I'll be looking to take a short up on that back test. You know, depending on when we actually get there, uh, you know, somewhere in the 560 to 5, you know, 80 range. I don't know when we'll get there. But if we get a move up there, that's the objective area to, to establish a short. So looking at the weekly, you know, not too much more to go. So we might get there next week, uh, a pop up there. If we get there next week, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, I, I don't know the level it'll be at. I pointed that out. But again, that's the area that it makes sense to short at. Uh, and that's what I'll be looking to do. Why would I want to short this thing versus go long? That's another question. Well, the reason why I want to short this thing, there's a couple reasons why I look for shorts in such a high flying stock like Nvidia versus look to continue to go long because the, the long trade has been the winning trade. Okay, a couple reasons. One, we broke trend here in Nvidia. So because the uptrend is broken, it, I now look for, you know, the down move. When an up when an uptrend upward trend has been broken, then you look for the downward move. So uh, I have to trust in this trend line. That's key. But that's why I look for multiple reactions along the trend line, um, you know, and and confirmations. However, that's so that's one reason I look for shorting. The other reason obviously goes back to the spy and the fact that the S and P five hundred on the weekly chart broke its bull market trend line. So the bull market's been broken. This. During the bull market, you want to be looking for longs. You know, you want to buy at support. When things sell off to support, that's when you want to buy. Everything's gravy, and all the money's being made on the bullish side. Now you broke trend, and if you've been bullish, uh, you know, if you've been bullish the market since you broke trend, which most most people who are bullish, uh, they just remain bullish. I think for the most time, they they just think stocks go up forever. Uh, and so if you broke trend here and you remain bullish, you're up, you're obviously up, uh, today, you know, this, this month, this week, you're up, maybe you're up about, uh, 15%, I guess in S and P 500 from when it broke trend over back in 2018. So, you know, two years ago, basically. And so you're up 15%, but that that's just right now. If you go back to, you know, go back to April, you were even uh, basically two years ago. And if you go back further, you were down. So you were talking about the two years worth of time. Now, if you go back in the bull market trend and you look at any two year period of time, there's really only this period right here where I can find any time if you took a two, two year period of time where you'd basically be even. Um, any other time throughout this entire bull, and the trend wasn't broken, but any, any other time throughout this bull market, you go to a two-year period of time and you're going to be up. And that's because it's a bull market. But now, this to me looks more like a topping pattern. So, yeah, you're up now. We'll see what how, you know, in a year from now, are you up, you know, or are you potentially down, you know. And if you're down in a year from now, I mean, that's being down after three years worth of time since we broke the trend. So, that's why I look for shorts because we're in a topping pattern uh, or at least a sideways consolidation pattern. You know, we could be in something like this, but the market's not moving up uh, over the big picture. Uh, yeah, we're going up in waves, down in big waves, very vol, you know, huge volatility. Down, big ups, big downs, big ups. 
chopping all over the place. There's nothing to say we can't have another big down move. Um, and so I look, but what I think is going to happen is I think we start to work our way lower over time. We don't get this big impulsive crash. We kind of grind lower, come in maybe to about the halfway point, chop sideways, and then start to work our way lower. And then eventually you'll see the impulsive selling and uh, you know that might round out the bear market. All right, and we'll wrap up with Tesla. <clears throat> Tesla held its trend on the weekly chart right there, just barely. Closed pretty much on trend line support for the weekly. So next week will be very telling as to whether Tesla has some continued strength left in it or not. Uh, I did take a short position in, in Tesla and I, I have not closed this position out. Um, and I'm down slightly, but right at, it's right at resistance slash support. So I'll zoom into the hourly and you can see what happened. We, we had the breakdown and we bounced up and had, you know, we kept getting rejected, but we just were just hanging in there. And that's basically how it closed the week was just grinding right along support, not having any energy to really pop above it, but able to just barely hold support uh, with that weekly close being right on support. So tells me, you know, it tells me we're either going to, you know, break or, or, or we're going to hold and, and move higher. So, uh, you know, I like to short things when it, you know, we got the breakdown right here and I'm looking at it right now as this is just a back test because they were barely able to hold it. To me, it looks like it's just a back test and we're going to break next week, probably with a gap down, maybe on Monday. Uh, if you get a gap down and you see prices down here and, and it can close and start to hold um, hourly closes down below here, then I'd expect some pretty impulsive selling to come into Tesla. So that is where I'm at. And, and, if, and if we gap up, then I'll just close my position and uh, take, you know, take that loss. It's not a huge short. Uh, you know, I, I took a starter short on this thing. I'm looking to add to it as I start to get confirmation. Uh, but that's where, what I see here. And going back to the weekly, you can see we've got, you know, we basically have negative divergence right here on the weekly. If I mark it out, this, it's right there. And we, you know, made a slight high right here on the weekly. We made a slightly higher high uh, and we had with the, with the opening week and we've, you know, put in that negative divergence now. So I'm looking for a break of this weekly trend line to put into motion kind of the longer swing trade of Tesla, which will be a move, you know, down to 180. There's this, I've got this target zone right in here around 250 to 225. That's a kind of a profit zone. Uh, and then ultimately there could even be a move down to this 130. I don't know if it'll get that far, but but we could, there's a gap down there that, that could get filled. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up here, longer video, but these weeklies, you know, we've got the time to really analyze how the week's closed and really start to get set up for next week. Um, so what I'm looking for, just to kind of prep everyone, is potentially a little bit more uh, pop in the markets, especially tech, maybe a little bit more higher prices, uh, up to 275 or potentially, you know, if I go to the hourly here on Qs, you know, 275 is not too far up there. So right around there, we could even pop up to this 280. Uh, I'd probably, you know, I would be starting to build a short, if we were up at 280, I'm gonna be adding to a short position. And then if we do a full back test of the trend line, I would probably, uh, you know, have a full position up here. Uh, so maybe I'll add a little bit at 275, add a little more at 280, and then take, you know, maybe have a half position up there and then take a full position up at this two, uh, you know, at a back test. And that's how I'm looking to play it. But again, there's nothing to say you're gonna get all the way up here to do the back test. We could fail at 275, we could fail at 280, we could fail right here. So nobody knows, we'll look to next week. Thank you guys, catch you on the next one.